Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Whataburger for all of your city building needs. Here are all of the materials that you will need to make it. Please make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. Here is the amount of space required to make the build, a 33 by 33 block area, as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which I would always recommend making if you are planning out your build. Step 1. If you have made the grid, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of it. Count to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then inwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is where we are going to be starting. Begin with a row of 7 terracotta going right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can continue by placing a row of 5 black stained glass. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then another row of 7 terracotta. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now we are going to extend backwards by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Place 3 glass. 1, 2, 3. And then another 7 terracotta. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now all we're going to do is extend across the back until we are even and level with the place that we started on the front. Now we want to extend forwards by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Extend one row towards us. We then have to extend upwards by five. One, two, three, four, five. And then across by four. One, two, three, four. And then we can essentially just join the bottom and the top of the shape together like this. And you might even want to add another row of this inside of itself. That sounds a little bit weird, but that's what we want to do. Just like this, kind of like just double upon the shape. And then we can connect the end of the shape to the beginning of the build. And the end result of which should look a little bit like this. I know it looks a little bit strange actually, but we're going to fix that. So let's start with the beginning. Let's start with the front of the build. I, I want to mark out all of the windows and the doors and, you know, all of that stuff. So the entrance of the build is, well, at the front. There's two, but the main entrance is at the front. So I want to extend the terracottas left and right. I want to extend them one row forwards. I'm going to destroy the central block here. And this is where one of the entrances are going to be. If we come all the way over to the right side now, we actually want to sort of have what we have over there, like, but on this side, kind of. So we want to extend the terracottas left and right here where we have the entrance. We can destroy this little central block here. You can raise the glass up by one, two, and one, two, and just join it together at the top, and then a door will just fit in there. If we raise up terracotta left and right, just like this, then this kind of just like frames the entrance a little bit. I guess it's no way near as tall as it is on that side, but it's the same sort of idea. And I suppose that we should really do the same sort of thing on the front as well, because on the front, of course, we want to have, uh, we want to raise up the glass by one, two, and one, two, join it together here. We can raise up the... Uh, terracotta parts using birch though so we should really start plotting out all of the windows and such so why don't we actually start from where we very first started here and then we can just mark them out so where we very first started here let's place ourselves a birch plank and then one to the right place two glass pane and then two birch plank move through the entrance and then we kind of want to do the same it's two planks two glass, two planks. On the side here, we already have one plank, so that would be two, and then two glass, two planks. Move through the entrance as well, two plank, 
two glass, two planks. And then on this side, aka the back, is we want to have one plank because we already have one. And then two glass, one plank, two glass, one plank, two glass. The rest of this is uh, birch planks across the back. And then on this side here, this part is all going to just be wall. On this part here, we do want another window, which has two birch on either side with glass in between. And we want to raise up all of the birch planks by, I do believe, three. I'm, I'm hoping that this is correct because it's a little bit of a strange build, this one. So they want to be, in total, three rows high, or at, le at the very least, two. I think that it's actually three, so, like, it's one, two, and then three, four in total. Um, the actual windows themselves are two by two, so as we do this, we're going to want to raise up these walls, and we're going to make sure that all of the windows also have, like, an extra row as well, so just like this. And I actually think that the reason that the walls are so high is because uh, part of them are hidden. And we can raise up all of these birch, uh, birch planks too. Uh, it's because part, part of the wall is already hidden because there's like a canopy that goes all the way around the edge of the restaurant anyway. So um, it might look a little bit tall now, but once we actually start introducing that, it's going to uh, kind of like limit the height. And then there is, it's actually a very interesting shaped building. And um, when it comes to this, I guess we'll just add some birch planks just across the top of here as well. Um, because we're going to need to place, uh, we, we need uh, to be able to place stuff on the entrance area here. So it's actually a very interesting shaped building. Like there's a few different, there's a few different layers to it. And there's like a, a the entrance is kind of interesting as well. Who would have thought that Whataburger would have what a what an interesting restaurant? That that was horrible. That was a horrible joke. What an interesting restaurant. <laughs> we oh by the way, we don't have Whataburger in the UK, or if we do, there's probably like one of them. <laughs> kind of how there's like one Denny's and there's like five Taco Bell and. I don't think that there's any Wendy's, so, you know, I've, I've never actually experienced Whataburger. I don't know whether it's any good. I, I don't know what the reputation is. So, we have raised up all of the birch planks now, which I'm pretty happy with. Which means it's going to be sort of essential for us to now... Do, we, we have to start doing this canopy a little bit. So, that involves making a bit more of the entrance area. Where we have these two posts that stick out at the entrance, we want to leave a gap of two, so that'd be one and two, and then a row of five, one, actually it's a row of four, one, two, three, four, terracotta, and one, two, three, four, terracotta, like this. And th basically, the, the canopy begins on the sides of these, and it's going to start off with smooth red sandstone stairs. It's probably easiest to stick with these. And it's going to extend inwards, like this. And it kind of wants to, like, the canopy doesn't directly want to connect to this, right? We The, the canopy is basically, it's two rows of stairs. So this first row of stairs wants to be one row away, and then the second row will naturally be one row higher, like this. And then on top of the actual wall, we'll have a row of slabs like this. Like, this is all a little bit tricky, but let's... If we place a little bit of it, it, w it won't be too hard. So, like, let's take this bottom row of the canopy here. Make sure it's one row away. And just extend it all the way around the build. Again, maintaining that one row distance. And then everything should be fine. So, here... Um, we might even have to extend the drive through outwards a little bit. Almost certainly, because I think it should just connect to the... Yes, okay, so the drive through, like this part here and the uh, opposite entrance, this is actually going to have to extend outwards an additional row. So this should just connect like this, and then the drive through will have its own little canopy. So if we add an extra row of terracotta, we continue placing this 
around here. Make sure it maintains the one row difference and then it kind of just joins here. Oh, and of course it'll, as usual, it'll overhang the uh, the actual entrance by a row as well. So, just like that. Um, we can even connect the two rows of terracotta together using a row of upside down birch stairs. And we're going to want to not only make the other rows of the canopy and such, but we also have to kind of like create a, a triangle. We have to create a roof for the entrance area here. Um, that's basically just using um, alternating... Well, not even alternating. That's basically just using rows of... Uh, cut, what is it? Smooth red sandstone stairs. Very difficult to say. Um, like this, which it will eventually reach an apex. And then the reason that I wanted to place that is because behind this we are going to place some birch planks. Uh, we'll join the stairs back here. So the st stairs will come here and here. We'll probably delete this. Uh, we will want to get rid of this corner birch because it will look a little bit better this way. And then basically like we can just place the other row of smooth red sandstone stairs. Very difficult to say by the way. Uh, we'll place this all the way around the top, move through, around the top, join it together like so. We'll probably want to fill this in, like um, this is the actual like roof to the entrance. We'll just extend rows backwards here. We want to place... Ah, okay, so that's another thing as well. So, let's... Okay, no, F first of all, yes. So confusing, isn't it? Okay, so behind where these slabs are going to be, we actually want to have another row of birch planks, right? So the birch planks are up and in in relation to the previous row of birch planks that we've placed, and they're going to be three rows high, so that's already one, two, three, right? So three rows, three rows high. Three rows for it. That doesn't even make any sense. Of course, they're three rows high if they're three rows. But you guys get the idea. We want to have three rows of birch planks that are above and inside the previous top row of uh, our water burger. And we don't strictly have to, although we can. Let, let's just connect them together in the middle because, okay, so let's just get all of these rows placed. Um, what I was going to do there is. Not only do we have these three rows, this is what makes it interesting. The canopy, the multiple entrances, the drive through etc, etc. Um, this kind of like interesting additional upper part of the restaurant. Not only is it interesting in this way, but there is also above the entrance area, the main entrance area here, we want to extend basically the width of the entrance where we have like, like the terracotta and the birch. We want to extend these upwards. So here, and I believe it will be here, and we want to extend the birch planks upwards so that they're one row higher than the previous rows of birch once again, and we want to extend the birch backwards by an additional row, so like this. And I'm just dropping it into the restaurant as well because I don't know where the roof line is going to be exactly. But hopefully you can kind of see like we've extended the entrance area up. It's one row higher than the previous. And then what we're going to do is on top of these extended areas, we're simply just going to place some cut red. Is it cut? No, smooth red sandstone slabs. Of course it is. I don't know why I keep thinking it's the cut variant. Although I think that they look the same. I might be wrong about that. And we want to place it on top of the entrance area as well, like the sticky out part. Looking pretty good. Um, and then that gives us something to guide this roof into. So here, like this, then slab here, and then these stairs here, and here, and then on top of this wall part here, we're going to be placing these slabs. All the way around, on top of the birch, whoops, so here, here, and here as well, and that's looking pretty good, but the, the only issue with this is it's a little bit plain, 
and we can change that a little bit. Oh, by the way, the entrance here on the side, we're going to extend the terracottas outwards a little bit um, so that it looks as though that the terracottas are propping up the, uh, well, the area. Uh, so, in the roof, and let's let's start on the left side, or, or maybe over here, whatever. So, let's start kind of like where we started, if that, if that makes sense. And right here, like next to the, like this overhang part, we want to take out the stairs and the slabs and replace them using smooth quartz slabs. So here, and then leave a gap of two, and then here as well. So here, here, and here. And we're going to move through, and we're going to do the same sort of thing. So we have the stairs here, here, and here. Gap of two, here, here, here. And here so you can see how that makes it it just makes it look a lot better and then I think that what we're gonna do is we're only gonna place uh, we're gonna place these in kind of like twos and if we come on to the opposite side here we're gonna leave like a row of one two three and this fourth row here we're going to have the mixture of quartz and then we're gonna leave a gap of two and then we're gonna have the quartz stairs and slabs come all the way over to the end one two three and then we're going to have the same thing so stairs like this slab stairs and slab just like this and then across the back of Whataburger we're going to add, again we're, we're kind of going to do the same thing so we'll leave like a gap of three one two three and then we'll take out these, gap of two, one, two, three. And then here, one, two, three, take out these, gap of two, one, two, three here. And then I think that we'll just leave it at that. Like, I, we, we could add another pair of them, but I sort of like it like this. I sort of like it just on the ends. I don't know why, but uh, if you do feel as though that you want to add a little bit more white, then you might want to. Uh, or that you you should if you feel as though that you want to um, on this side gap of three and then we've got just enough room that we can place it uh, next to the window and it'll work out the same here so I don't need to count um, it's just one row away like this stairs stairs slab stairs stair nope stairs slab same thing here stairs stairs slab and we're actually getting to a good point in this build ladies and gentlemen like we've actually made a good amount of the structure now very very happy with how we've been progressing and this is this is sort of like what we should have very happy so what do we have to do next well we have to i want to get as much of the outside done as possible so that's going to require uh, some flowers oak leaves smooth stone gray concrete white concrete some yellow concrete and that's that's most of what the outside's made out of so around the restaurant we are going to have so like on the left and right sides i want to have oak leaves like built up on the left and right sides okay so here and here and then on this side here and here and then flowers along the outside uh, well you know what? I'm just going to destroy the floor because it's got to be destroyed anyway. And then I want to have flowers on the outside of the hedge, like this. And then in front of this window, like so. So, here, here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit um, sloppy with these and then what across yeah and across the back it's just fine I, I'm going to be a little bit sloppy with these because I'm going to be destroying the floor anyway so like this is this is about as much nature as we're going to have on the outside of the build and then that kind of allows us to then place two rows of smooth stone it's making me it's making me f oh my bad uh, never mind. I thought that I misplaced something then, but it's because the flowers were in the way that it was like, hang on, did I not leave enough room here? I did. I did leave enough room. So we want to have two rows of smooth stone that go just all the way around the restaurant, essentially, just like this. Um, the two rows of smooth stone just form a pathway. And, uh, and from there, we're able to kind of like make some car parking spaces. And from there, we're able to make a bit of a drive through. And from there, 
we can make a wall. It probably keeps going. I'm running out of from theirs, but you guys get the idea. So, destroy this just inside the entrance because of course the path wants to go all the way into the actual entrance of Waterbug. So here, here as well. I think that this is just about all of the smooth stuff. Well, actually no, it's not because it wants to come, as I mentioned, just all the way into the entrance here. Um, I don't know what to place underneath this. I don't know whether to put like terracotta underneath these black, um, black glass. Might look better here. And then, obviously, in between as well. Oh, there is a little bit more nature, actually. So, I don't know if I have left enough room for us to have a bit of a pathway. I think I might have done. Um, on these builds, I usually always make sure that there's a bit of a sidewalk or a pavement, as one might call it. Uh, so, extend the entrance out like this, using the smooth stone. And then it, kinda, it can kind of connect to anything like... Uh, you can just have it like this, or you could make, uh, you know, you can connect it to the street or what have you, but oak leaves are going to be placed just on the left and right of this path here, and here, like this, and then we're going to have, I do believe that there is actually enough space for a pavement, so I think I'm going, I'm going to take these last two rows out, uh, yeah, and there should be enough room. If not, the car parking spaces will just look at... I shouldn't be destroying the smooth stone as well. I'm just going to have to replace that. But... <laughs> whoops. But, um... Yeah, we'll be able to have our car parking spaces. We'll be able to make the wall. And then... Yeah, so... Just like that. No! So, here as well. Perfect. So... Yeah, that, that's looking pretty good, and then that'll, of course, you know, then it now it's, like, integrated into a street or what have you, but you don't have to have this part whatsoever. Uh, car parking spaces are very simple. He, over here on the left side, I believe it's, like, row of one, two, three, grey, then white concrete, one, two, three, grey, and then white concrete here, and then these all just extend outwards to the, uh, to the pavement, like this. And then we can just fill these in. I mean, th this kind of like, these are just guiding rows. So the white concretes can just be extended all the way. And then the gray concretes can be extended all the way like this. Perfect. And then this side, similar sort of thing. So I'm going to destroy all the way to where we have the uh, two rows of smooth stone. Like so. And then we're going to... We'll start from the left. Three rows of grey concrete. One, two, three. White concrete. Three rows of grey concrete. White concrete. And then we'll have uh, kind of like some yellow lines and stuff. Uh, so that could signify like a bit of extra space for people that perhaps have, uh, you know, some different needs. Or maybe it's like where uh, motorbikes could park. Either way, it looks it will look pretty good. And then here, like if we just have a checkered pattern of the yellow concrete, like here. And then a grey concrete. It just looks pretty good. And it kind of just fills this area in. And I don't know, like I like that instead of just having like a little bit more greenery. I'm going to add a wall all the way around. So this is pretty much going to be on the remaining white concrete area. So everywhere that we still have white concrete for the grid, I mean the wall is pretty much going to be present. Uh, whether it wants to be one row high or two rows high or something that I like to do sometimes is uh, have like a one row high on the sides and then a two row high at the back. So that's also another option as well. Like that. Doesn't look too bad. And then we can dig out this area here. And whether you want to dig out the pavement area as well. Or whether you want to kind of just like have people drive over the pavement <laughs> to get into the drive through You know, that's also a very real possibility as well. Uh, so we can do this. Just like so. And we've just got to take out all of the grass and replace it with grey concrete. Quite boring to watch really. But you know, I guess that it's it's got to be done. And then, other than the sign, and if you want to make kind of like a little mock menu on the side somewhere, um, it's not a great place for it, other than maybe like at the back here, or maybe or maybe we just order at the window. Um, that's also another possibility, like we can order at the window, but we could make a speaker box somewhere here, and uh, there probably would be enough... Um, 
enough room to just place like a couple of paintings and stuff kind of like just representing what food there is or uh, definitely uh, some item frames and some paintings and stuff mixed in i like uh, i like to keep it a little bit vague like Instead of like placing item frames with like, I don't know, beef or steak in there rather, and uh, well, it's the same thing I guess, but uh, chicken and stuff like, I'd rather just like use one by one paintings, and then that way, I mean, obviously not all of the paintings look like food, few of them do actually, one of them is literally food. Uh, one of them's a kebab, but it's, I'd rather have that, and it, it just looks like, you just gotta use your imagination a little bit then. Uh, and then it, you know, d keeping it a little bit vague, you gotta use your imagination instead of, you know, using uh, item frames and such, but uh, I guess that's up to you, and this is also, you know, I, I guess a little bit mundane, so we'll get filling the rest of this in, we've actually almost finished, and then we have to do a lot of mass filling in inside as well, so there we go, it's looking really good though already, I'm very, very happy with this, I probably have to, yes, I've got to terracotta underneath some of the glass here, but this is almost entirely primed for... Uh, for us to knock out the floor. Yeah, I, I guess we can. Let's knock out the entire floor. Now, the only thing is, actually, actually, let's, uh, time out. Time out one second. Yes, there's two different floors in here, so it's probably best for us to, what are we going to need? We'll need the spruce wood planks, chisel quartz block, black concrete, and we'll also need some orange concrete, and we'll start off like this. Maybe even a little bit of, um... Because I, I kind of want to destroy it all the way to the drive-thru here. And then... I, I guess that that's actually fine. Oh, we'll also need the stairs. It's actually quite nicely set out in here, honestly. We'll need the smooth, uh, smooth red sandstone stairs as well. And the roof line... Let's, let's start by doing this right. So, above where we have the window line, I want to place upside down smooth red sandstone stairs. Kind of like all the way around the inside, right? Because it's actually like the... It, it'd have an insanely high ceiling otherwise, right? Like this. And then I do realize that this is going to have to be taken care of as well. Um, we're going to have to do something with that. Uh, we could probably with this... Oh, we've got to do that on the outside here. Like, we can drop the... We, we can drop the terracotta to where we have the, uh, the sandstone line like this. We could even maybe leave that a little bit hollow because it looks a little bit more interesting. And then, when it comes to the... Actually, no. We, we want to have uh, the terracottas extended outwards. We'll need the black glass pane. And we want to place them on the left and right sides like this. And then we want to have just a little a little roof for the drive through. So uh, the stairs want to stick out one row or two rows here, just like above where we have the drive through window. And then upside down stairs underneath, just like so. And there we go. Like we've got like a nice little overhang. Um, you could even have um, where are they? If you wanted to, you could have the middle do this. I don't, I don't think that that looks too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, coming back inside, in doing that, we also have to make the ceiling. So, there's two ceilings. The first ceiling, I'm going to have up top here. So, this is going to be... And I'm just going to make it uh, chiseled uh, chiseled quartz. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, chiseled quartz block. I'm starting to get confused with all of the different variants of quartz that I use. I've been using a lot of chiseled quartz bricks, although I don't think that they're even called chiseled quartz bricks. I think that they are called simply quartz bricks. I keep forgetting whether things are smooth sandstone, cut sandstone, smooth quartz bricks, smooth just chiseled quartz bricks, quartz bricks just by themselves. It's a lot to remember, ladies and gentlemen, but regardless, we want the, the cool swirly pattern quartz. That might be an easier way to go. We want the swirly quartz. I should rename all of the items in Minecraft. <laughs> Imagine how confusing it'd be <laughs> if I just decided to rename everything. So here, it's getting a little bit dark, but that's okay. We can still see. And basically, the reason that we've done that is because if we have a look from the outside. So from the outside, we wanted to fill in the roof, which we have now done, perfect. But that means that the ceiling is very, very high on the inside. And what I would prefer is above the 
uh, the stairs line here, the upside down stairs line, I would rather just have a false ceiling. And you can see there's a two row gap, so the ceiling could actually be three rows higher. And I just prefer it this way. And there's still like, it's actually still a little bit higher than I would typically have the insides of buildings anyway. Uh, usually I like to leave. I find that a very, very comfortable medium is three rows. Like, if you've made a building, and a room has three rows. Oh, I'm I'm kind of kind of right, kind of wrong, but like three rows here, and then we've got the stairs. So you know, it's kind of a little bit different. But three rows in height is usually like a good number. It's like not too small, not too big. It's got it's it's Goldilocks. It's just right. So now that we've kind of got like the inside of this cleaned up a little bit. The next thing that we have to do is kind of like figure out where the uh, customer area is and figure out where the worker area is. So, left of where we have the drive through uh, window here, so here, we want to leave a gap of one and then place black concrete. We want to have the black concrete extend out as far as where the terracotta is here for the entrance. And then the black concrete wants to go all the way over to the left here. And then in the ceiling, we want to have the same sort of thing, except there doesn't need to be any gaps in the ceiling area. Like this. Perfect. So now we've kind of devised these areas. Um, we can even add an extra row of black concrete just along the back here. We can use that for workstations and such. And then I'm going to take out the entire floor. And the reason it was important to uh, differentiate between the customer area and the worker area, the kitchen, I should call it, the kitchen worker area almost sounds, I don't know, it sounds a little bit weird, but the kitchen area is because um, the floor is different. That's the only reason that we've uh, that we've separated them. So just to kind of, like, it just breaks up the inside of the build. Like, the inside of this build, I mean, it's not the most interesting interior that I may have made, but... Um, it's it's about not it's not too far off really like it's a um, you know I mean it's it's just like a regular good old fast food restaurant like uh, I guess not all of them have to be and it's kind of like an old fashioned y sort of one like it's not like say like a modern McDonald's you know where there's like big fancy machines where you order stuff and there's like plant life and like there's a lot going on. So it's it's kind of like one, you know, it's just one of those where it's just like it's it's like a nice interior, but it's like not it's not insanely detailed. And we could we could always add say like a bathroom or something in here um, if we wanted to. I mean that might make things a bit more interesting, but then um, then we've probably got to cover up some of the windows, but we could do that, actually. That, that might fix things a little bit. It'd probably go about here, and we could differentiate between uh, the women's and men's toilets, so it'd probably go about here. One bathroom might have to be a little bit smaller than the other. Maybe it could, maybe it could take up this space, and then is there a way to... You see, it, it, it's going to be a very small bathroom, though, actually. Like, I mean, we could, a, a bathroom has to be at least about three rows. So maybe it could take up space there and then we could like, yeah, okay. So I, I think that from this part here, I'm going to connect these two windows together. And then if we were to, I mean, I guess, I guess we can leave the windows in and we'll have like a stall here and then it's, it's not so bad. So let's, anyway, we, we've destroyed the floor. And I, last minute changes, ladies and gentlemen, because I, I am realizing that I prefer it to be just a bit more interesting. And even even if it's just adding in a bathroom, which seems like a really like, sort of boring way to make it a bit more interesting, it does just sort of break up the monotony of just like a big uh, square, I believe that this restaurant's square, a big square room. Um, if not, it's a very, it's very wrecked, it's... It's a very square rectangle, if not. But with the bathroom, like, so from here, it goes from here and it'll connect to the wall. And then we can just take the uh, birchwood planks and we can kind of like, just do this, here, here. And we'll just we'll just feed it into the ceiling and we can still keep, I get, uh, you might call that coving. I'll call that coving. And then, yeah, the inside of the bathroom is pretty interesting with the coving and the roof. 
Um, and then the stalls. We could even use black concrete for this, or maybe even some terracotta. Like, we can just have one stall here, just kind of, like, immediately as you walk in. And then we can place a toilet. That can be as easy as an upside-down smooth quartz stairs. We can give it a door. We already have the birch doors, and we can leave it open. And then we simply just need a trap door, which we'll grab later. And then we can have, like, a little sink area, and that could be... I mean, we could even use orange concrete for this. I don't know if it's going to be a bit too bright or not. Uh, maybe black concrete might be a better alternative. Or even the chiseled quartz uh, would be good. And we can have just, like, maybe we'll have the sink here, tripwire hook above it, and then we'll have uh, just, like, a dryer on the wall. So that could even be this. So there we go. That's perfect. And then, we, and then we've got a nice little bathroom. And we can have a door there. And then that's perfect. And you see what I mean? That does just make things a bit more interesting. Like, I mean, not insanely interesting or anything, but you know, it's it does just sort of like add something. It just breaks things up. So the next thing that I want to do is I kind of want to devise some seating areas now, which have uh, changed a little bit, I suppose. But the seats, I'm going to use uh, sandstone stairs for them with end rods and black carpet. I'm going to be placing some paintings and uh, let's let's just start. So uh, they're kind of like I want to be able to maneuver around them. So it'll probably be like from this corner, we'll leave a gap, two stairs, gap, two stairs like this. And then obviously we'll want stairs on the opposite side and then we can have the end rods. The end rods are what is going to give this light without having to hang a lot of lanterns everywhere. And then we can have single seating. Well, single but double, if that makes sense. You know, like these have opposite sides of the tables, whereas those ones are going to just be singles, like this. Because I don't really want to get in the way of the entrance. I don't really want to, like, get in the way of this by placing stairs, so that's fine. And then what this should allow us to do is, I mean, I guess we could still have stairs here. We can have, we can queue here. And then, so, stairs here. And then, I guess we can have the same sort of thing, but we'll have the stairs, like, facing inwards, like this. And rods providing us, like, a nice little bit of light. If you want to actually place stuff on these tables, you're going to have to redesign them. Uh, I really like the end rods with the carpet on them, but it doesn't allow you to place anything on the tables, which is the only downside to it. But I'm, I'm actually very, very happy with this now. That actually looks a lot better. Um, we can add a bit of uh, carpet, air quotes on the word carpet. So we can have like some orange concrete kind of like just in front of the uh, order area here. Um, this area is looking a little bit open, but I guess that's okay. Like, a little bit of open space is fine. I want a... Uh, well, what do you call it? It's kind of like a breakfast bar. Like a bar table, maybe that's what you'd call it. Like, I want... Like, just in the middle of here. Like, it's one of those elevated tables. Like, I want this kind of, like, spanning this area here. And you can have a load of end rods supporting it, or you could use something else. And then I'm going to have just oak fence to differentiate from the emeralds because I don't want to use those uh, for seats. And then some carpet on top of here. So hopefully this, this comes across as what it is, which is a table with chairs. Um, the only thing I worry about with that is maybe maybe we just have to use... Uh, maybe we just have to use actual stairs because... I think that the fence variant just looks a little bit weird, so maybe that's just like a long table. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and then what we can do is like we can place paintings um, all about the place. It, it might even be cozy to add some lanterns. So like a painting here would look fine. And then say like, oh no, we can't hang lanterns unless we change the structure of the wall. But I, I quite like there just being a single painting, like... Okay, so anywhere that we've kind of, like, got a gap of three, say, so, like, here... Um, we would have one here, so it might be appropriate. Like, if this was birch, like, we would have one here. So that might be an appropriate place. Um, and then... I mean, I, I guess in just those places, it's sort of fine. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's okay. Uh, we could even have larger paintings on this wall. So what does this work out to be like if we leave a gap on both sides? So we could have two singles. 
Or we could, I guess we could have like a two in the middle. So that's fine. Just to keep things a little bit more interesting. Uh, a different height as well, so that's okay. I don't know whether it'd be better to join the... That together. I think that that might look a little bit better. And then perhaps we should drop the painting down. No. I would like the... Oh, perfect. Excellent. So yeah, that that's not looking too bad. I mean, it's definitely a, definitely a little bit improved, I would say. And then in the kitchen area... Um, I mean, th there's some stuff that we can reuse now. So, like, we'll be using the smooth quartz there. We'll be needing white carpet or even black carpet, maybe. Um, we'll be using furnaces. We can use lanterns and stuff in the kitchen, too. Um, we don't really have too much uh, too much else that we can kind of, like, repurpose. But uh, I want to have, like, a load of cookers just on the right side. We'll probably add a couple of blast furnaces and stuff to here. Um, we definitely want to have tills. That's going to, of course, be smooth quartz stairs. Kind of, like, place them evenly. And then we'll, we'll use white carpet next to them. I always like to place something next to the tills. It just looks better, in my opinion. Uh, maybe, like, a lantern on this corner where you could even hang it. Might look a little bit better hang it just because it kind of puts something in the air then um and then like this could be an order board so like this could also function as kind of like an order board so like it sort of works out if we just place some stuff here or we could have one by ones and then item frames or signs next to them but i i, I kind of like that is it just sort of looks like an order board and I think that we're actually getting to the point, ladies and gentlemen, where we probably have to drop out some of these materials and then grab the ones that we just kind of need to finish things off just to kind of like put the finishing touches. But it's not looking too bad. I think that I think that we're getting there. Okay, so just to finish off the build, here are all of the remaining materials that we are going to be using. Please to make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. So, we're going to be starting off with Blast Furnace, Detector Rails, Polished Blackstone, uh, Polished Blackstone Pressure Plate, Andesite Stairs, Brewing Stand, Flower Part, Red Concrete, Smooth Quarter Stairs, Tripwire Hook. So, the Blast Furnaces are basically just for a bit of variation over here. So, destroy a couple of furnaces, throw some Blast Furnaces, and then either place Polished Blackstone Pressure Plates on one set of them, and then Detect Rails on the other, or vice versa. And then I'm going to have a couple of extractor fans above uh, a couple of the cookers. And there you go. Um, along the back here, I kind of want like a, a fancy-ish sort of drinks machine. So I'm thinking a couple of rows of like red concrete like this. And then actually we could destroy... Uh, yeah, and then we destroy the back. And then like an upside down stair. And then a triple A hook like this. And then maybe, like, just next to this, like, we place, like, a brewing set. Something like this, right? I think would look pretty good. And then maybe even a little bit of red concrete. And then it just looks about... Uh, and then we could even destroy some of the ceiling, like, put it into the ceiling. Like, I think that that would just look a little bit more interesting than just, like, a regular old... Uh, just chucking a couple of brewing stands next to each other. Uh, if we place a couple of flower pots next to it, then that kind of hopefully emphasizes what we want going on. Um... About the counter, we can have some, like, candles, yellow and red for ketchup and mustard, uh, chest, cauldron, oak trap doors, item frames, azure bluettes, green concrete, and, like, what all this stuff is for, like, the candles, a bit, again, I've already just explained what the candles are, I suppose, but, like, we could have a couple of bottles kind of, like, just put together, probably not one on the floor, that doesn't make too much sense, um, we could have, like, uh, a couple of chests, just, like, where we have the drive through so, like, ready for the people uh, over here uh, who have ordered their food. A couple of chests, like, along the back here as well, just kind of, like, um, make it a little bit more interesting back there. Like, it, that that looks pretty good now, I think. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It's not too detailed, not too little detailed either. Um, the flowers, by the way, are for if you did want to kind of, like, decorate the counter a little bit. Um, basically just something like that and again you know we're getting to the point where it might be a little bit more detailed i don't know i mean item frames up with the drinks machine if you wanted to include that as well um yeah I, i'm pretty happy with that though like I, I think that that looks pretty good um i did also consider this i did consider double widing the kind of like order area here just to add a little bit more orange um 
the trap door is for the toilet, so inside of here. So that's just to look like a, a lid. Um, cauldron in here, that's that's a sink. And then tripwire hook above it, there you go. I mean, as easy as that, you could even have like an item frame in here. That's a bit ambiguous. What is the item frame? I don't know, you tell me. And then <laughs> we've got like a flower pot here with a zero blue You know, just kind of like make it a little bit nicer. Um, I'm quite happy with the toilet area there, and I'm quite happy with the, like the entire inside. I mean, the only thing that you might want to add is like bins, um, and bins. I mean, you know, they can kind of look. I mean, there's a few different ways to make them. Again, it, a lot of this requires a little bit of imagination, anyway. Um, but like an item frame in front of one with like a black stone pressure plate. I mean, that looks like a bin to me. Um, if you wanted to add like I don't know, pr probably just leave it at that. Like that looks like a bin. Um, I mean, we could have one over there. We could have one over here. Uh, we could, I mean, you could have like a trap door in front. You could have a trap door on top, and then it looks like you flip it up. But most of uh, most of bins in fast food restaurants, to my uh, uh, to my experience, is like you you throw it through the front, and then that's kind of like what that is, and it's got a top. I mean, that's. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's not too much more to add in here. I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's kind of cozy. I, I enjoy it. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, oh, we've got to put doors on as well. Um, this is something that... Oh, no. Oh, guys, I just got rid of the stuff we need. It's, it's okay. But luckily, it's just banners. So I just need to re-grab the loom. A load of white, white banners and then... Um, just white dye and orange dye. But basically, um, the doors, I'm using a birch door because most of this is birch. Uh, just here and here. Like, I should have done that earlier, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. And all we've got to do is just, like, a load of banners now. So, you guys know me, my favorite part. So, let's throw down the loom. Let's open it up. And let's, uh, let's get some banners going. So, um... Oh, I must have put them into my inventory. I thought I'd destroy it. Whatever. So... First banner is going to be W, and we actually get to use this a couple of times. So first of all, we're going to throw orange dye, and we're going to do the triangle at the bottom. Grab that, put that back in, throw the orange out, put the white in, and we want to do like, I always call it the teeth, it kind of looks like teeth. So along the bottom of the banner, grab that, throw the white dye out, orange in, vertical row of orange on the right, and then the left boom, you've got W. Perfect. That's our first letter. Next letter is going to be H. Vertical row of orange on the left and the right. Horizontal straight through the middle. H. A is going to be horizontal through the middle. Top. Vertical on the right and left. Perfect. And then we have to make T, cup of tea would be lovely. And then uh, that is a horizontal row of orange across the top, straight through the middle, boom, T. The next letter would be A again, so we can just reuse that one. So instead, we're going to make B, vertical row on the left, horizontal through every single plane, and then a vertical on the right as well. Boom. And now we have... It's going to look like Whatburger. <laughs> um, so we need U now. So that is vertical row on the right, as we already have. Vertical row on the left. Horizontal along the bottom. Boom. U. Next would be R. So this is quite easy as well. Horizontal across the top. Vertical on the left. Diagonal, top left corner, bottom right corner, boom, we have, we have what burr. <laughs> so we're going to have to throw some of these in the inventory. We'll just have to grab them as we need them a little bit later, but there we go. Okay, so we would, we've got B and then the net, yeah, and then we had U, R, so we need G now. So G is kind of like another annoying one. Vertical on the right in orange, grab that, throw out the orange, white in. Make the upper half of the banner white. Grab that. Throw the white out. Orange in. Horizontal row across the bottom. Vertical up the left side. Horizontal across the top. Boom, you got a G. So next is E. 
And this is the last banner, actually, because we get to use uh, R twice. So, uh, E is, I mean, horizontal across the top, bottom, middle, and then a vertical row on the left. And there you go, you've got E. And then, if we get all the... You know what, we're just going to have to mix and match. There, oh, we actually could... Oh, we've got enough room for it. Oh, well. So, I want a W above the entrance, right? Just a W... Uh, a bit higher. There we go. I want a W just above the entrance. But the sign basically sits on the right side of the build. And you leave a gap of two here on the left. And then W, H, A, T, A, B, U, R, G, E, R. So if you leave a gap of two on the left, you'll have a gap of two on the right. There's what a burger. And honestly, what a build. So this is what your Whataburger should look like once it has been 100% fully completed. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed making this build. If you have, please do remember to hit that like button. Helps me out loads and loads. Helps the video out. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Click that little bell next to the subscription button. That will ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to make anything else by me, check out the card system in the description below and the top of the comment section for the City Builds playlist. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.